Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20. I hope you guys brought your towels, because it's time for episode 42 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. Uh, today's episode, I'd like to uh, focus on upgrading my applied energistic system. It's about time we make this thing a little bit more fancy. So we've had a lot of fun uh, doing the basics of applied energistics, but I'd like to do more. I'd like to uh, pursue greater goals. So I've uh, been clearing out a little bit of space downstairs here, might need more. Uh, but I'd like to get a nice and somewhat compact uh, build for the, um, the, the um, molecular assemblers here. So we can get several of them working all at the same time, right? Um, now we've obviously got the one so far with just a couple interfaces on it. We're going to move these downstairs. Um, and I'm probably going to move my crafting storage downstairs and might even move my ME drive downstairs. But we'll have to see, uh, you know, how we can do with our, our movement. I might leave the drives up here. Um, and maybe even the crafting stuff. I don't know. But I want to move these down at least. Um, and I'd also like to get my crafting terminals a little bit more, uh, you know, Know, stretched out throughout my base. I'd like to have some maybe one or two upstairs uh, as well as one or two downstairs so that it's easy for me to access my stuff from wherever I'm at. So I don't have to keep running around reaching my AE terminal. I can just get it from anywhere on my base and eventually we'll set up some wireless storage for that but we'll get to that eventually. So for now let's get started moving this stuff. So the first question I have is can I pick this up without it dropping all the stuff it has? No I cannot. So question answered right there. There we go. Come up here with me, you guys. For the temporary time, let's put um, that stuff in there like that, just so I have inventory space available. I want to get this down here, and I want to come up with a more compact way to handle these molecular assemblers and plan for the future. So let's uh, change things up a little bit. Let's jump real quick into uh, some form of bat mode or something so that I can see where my cabling is at right now. So we had things along, let's see, this line is where I had my molecular assembler set up, right? Okay. So that's okay. I can just leave that as is probably. I do want to keep, you know, a good distinction about where I have everything set up so that I can keep track of um, wiring and whatnot. We will have to upgrade and get some fancier wires eventually, but at least right now we're okay. So things are a little bit of a mess. Soren would probably yell at me if he saw my cabling of ME, but that's okay. Um, you know, he does a bad job cabling too, so that's on him. I will continue to... Uh, plan out how I want to do this. So let me get um, the basic layout of how I want my molecular assemblers laid out and then we'll be back. All right guys, let's get to work. So the first thing I want to show you is something that I actually learned from you guys. Uh, somebody posted on the comments, I think a few people posted when I was making my facades for my controller and cables. They said if you go into your network tool and shift click, you can see there's a transparent facades option here that you can turn on. And it basically makes it so that when the toolbar is in your hand, the facades are in fact transparent. How cool is that? So uh, news to me, did not know about that one. Pretty cool though, I think it's awesome. Uh, what I'm going to do here is rearrange some of the cabling that I've got to make it a little bit easier to run the cables that I'm going to have here uh, in just a minute. So let's make sure that nothing is touching where we don't want it to. Because remember, it'll start messing with channels, and we don't want to have any problems with channels. So that thing is now back online. Those are the connections that lead down to the interfaces for uh, some of the auto crafting. This is going to be the connection line that's going to lead down to some of the interfaces for some more auto crafting. This is basically going to be all the auto crafting um, stuff that I've got planned. So let's make sure that this all runs smoothly. And I should probably go ahead and make sure that we have at least one smart cable here. Of course, you could use smart cable throughout your entire system. That wouldn't be a bad thing, really. But I mean, it's, I don't want to say it's a waste of resources, but it's not really necessary. So having these connections here definitely will help to ensure that things do not connect. You can, of course, also um, color things, and we'll probably start coloring our cables pretty soon, actually. Uh, it might just make life a little bit easier um, to help segment things. Uh, I think there's even a color applicator tool that we can get to play with, but we'll uh, play with that a little bit later. For now, this is the easiest way to go about what we're trying to do. So let's run our stuff down here. I might actually want... Um, a smart cable block right there. 
maybe there coming out the ceiling. Um, yeah, that's probably better. Cool. And what my plan is, is the following. We are going to um, place a molecular assembler pretty darn close to this thing. Uh, we might even want to move our interface layout around. So what you can do is actually convert your interfaces into um, kind of like panels similar to the interfaces and whatnot. So uh, what we can do is this and this acts exactly the same way that the interface does. So it's the exact same block instead of a full size block though it is just a almost like cover that sits on top of that thing. Pretty cool right? So we can put our um, things like this and then the cables can exist within the same block space and you can see that it's all within the same contained block. What's nice is that now we can uh, wind up placing the covers on the other sides as well and start hooking into more locations, right? So we'll see now that we are currently using, it should be three, yep there we go, three interfaces are online. Now if I wanted to um, I could just go ahead and start inserting my encoded patterns but I have a better idea. Let's check out the interface terminal. This is going to make uh, dealing with these interfaces a lot easier. Another comment I got in a few video of, about the um, crafting is that it was kind of annoying to find a free interface. Don't worry it's not hard at all. Check this out. So let's grab terminals actually and what we want is the ME interface terminal. So what do we got so far that we can deal with? Okay, so we're going to need um, some kind of illuminated panel. It shouldn't be too hard. Let's get some quartz glass. Do I have that? Uh, that's right, my stuff's off at the moment, so I can't even auto craft most of anything. That's okay, we'll get it done. So we want the interface terminal. And we're also gonna want an ME interface for this. So let's craft one of these while we're at it. So we're gonna need one of you. Oh wow, I don't have any of those. Okay, good, I do have some of those. So one annihilation plane, and once we have this all set up, auto crafting will be that much easier. Cool, so these guys can go in here and get me an interface that will convert into this. And then the interface terminal just needs the illuminated panel. And we should be ready to go, beautiful. Let's get our cable. I guess I'll just use smart cable because it's what I happen to have on me. And we'll place the interface terminal here. So what this does is it connects to all the interfaces on the network and it will automatically detect and group the interfaces based on what type of block they're connected to. So, for example, before I show you what the actual interface looks like, let's zip down here and take a look. So we've got one that's sitting on a, um, you know, these uh, furnace things, the alloy furnaces, one that's on a sag mill, two alloy smelters, and three that are on a molecular assembler. And remember that each of these has eight slots, right? Is it eight or nine? Nine? Okay, nine slots uh, per. So if we go upstairs and take a look at the interface terminal, ta-da, we can see and immediately have access to all the um, different types of stuff. So you can see that we've got two alloy smelters set up and the first row is the first set of nine and the second row is the next set of nine. So the different interfaces here, right? Now, if you wanted to, you could make it a little bit easier to keep track of them, but for now, I think we're in good shape. You can also search for stuff. So if I search for molecular assembler, you've got the three molecular assembler interfaces all right there. And then we can just start inserting these guys like so, cool. And I could, of course, shift click it if I wanted to. No? Don't want to let me shift click? Okay, that's fine. So we'll just continue to put these in like so. So you can directly access your uh, interfaces and immediately keep track of when you need to have a new one. So let's snag you, you, and all these. That looks good. You can also go into the molecular assembler interface. Cool. And it doesn't matter what you put where because it's all going into the molecular assembler and it's nice because it groups them all together. So, you know, eventually we might have, you know, 20 different interfaces all plugged into different molecular assemblers. That's fine. It'll all be grouped up. And you should see here that we have now inserted all of our patterns so we can easily keep track of where our patterns are. So if you miss the old interface of being able to, in one spot, you know, insert a bunch of different things, don't. 
it's fine. It's still there. You can still do it. Uh, so, of course, we also have access to our sag mill and any other recipes that we come up with. So um, let's actually request uh, another interface here. So let's do that. So craft one of those for me. Thank you. Auto crafter go. Yes. Crafting one ME interface. I assume as much. You know what, maybe I have to plug in. There we go. Ta-da! Now it's working. Beautiful. I like it. So now the interface is working. And of course, if we wanted to, we could snag another. So maybe what I should do is not have this interface here. That'll be the plug into that. And we'll have an interface here. And then I'll have another one on this side. Cool. And for now, cable anchor. That guy. Cool. So now we've got four rows in the interface section. Not too shabby. Nice. Look at that. And then, of course, I can put all the interface pieces back in there that I had. So now that that's in place, I'll come back in a minute and we'll do some more work with this network to make sure things are nice and organized. All right, so briefly, just because I had a little bit of fun getting ready um, to, to do stuff here, I wanted to make sure that this pattern, both of these, were known to the molecular assembler. So, easily enough, just drop them into the molecular assembler slot, and now I should be able to auto-craft more cabling. Cool. And while I'm at it, I'm actually going to teach it how to make a uh, smart cable. I figured that would be a good idea. So let's get some um, ME covered cable here, which is just wool plus cable. So we'll craft one of these to get it started. Dun 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 dun. There you go. Encode that pattern, and we can use this thing to get um, this guy. So if we threw our um, interface piece into here, request the crafting of one of these, and brought this down, you can see now we can encode that pattern, and we've got the smart cable pattern ready to go. So if I want to auto craft any smart cables, not a problem. Sweet. And for my next trick, guys, I think I'm ready to automate the thing that used to be sitting here, the crystal growth accelerators. So we're going to do a full-blown automation of the requests for uh, both um, Fluix Crystal and for the crystal growth accelerators using things like, uh, you know, the, the different seeds and whatnot. So this is going to be a multi-stage build. It's going to be a little bit complicated, but I think it'll work out pretty well in the end. So let's get pretty much set up with where we're going to have everything. I was thinking like right here would be about where we want stuff to be. Um, is this it or do I want to go back one further? might not be a bad idea to go back one further. So along here we'll stick with this stuff. We're going to have the four crystal growth accelerators like so. We're going to have the water plant there, and uh, what we want to have is something that can just immediately drop items down. Um, so we could go with, what is it called? The Something from Batania. I'm using it over in the other Batania room. Let's go take a look real quick. What's it called? Open crate. That's it. Yes, the open crate is what I'm going to use. Uh, I might have the stuff in my AE system. You'll also notice I ran out of LP. I turned off the zombie generator and kind of forgot. Anyway, um, open crate. So we just need some living wood planks. Like so. Cool. So anything, of course, that goes in the open crate will immediately drop directly down. What I'd also like is some glass. Thickened glass ought to work. And um, yeah, it's good for now. 
Let's do something here because I really don't want to accidentally like walk into stuff. So I'm just going to put thickened glass in the front for the time being. And we should be able to place the open thing here so that anything that gets uh, piped into it, for example, should wind up. And I forgot it doesn't have an interface, so you can't put stuff in directly. But for the time being, we'll use a hopper. And in a minute, we'll switch this out with an interface. But just for testing purposes, that goes in there and it gets sucked into my inventory because magnets. <laughs> There we go, much better. What I should probably do is just to be safe is probably something like this. And then here's where we'll have the cable come in. Let's get another interface up and running. There we go. And we will convert this into this. Stick this onto here. Uh, you know what, I might want to... I think I'm gonna stick this with just a regular old style interface. Yeah. And then we can run some cables over to it. I'll probably just tap it into this line. So... There we go. And since this interface is now live, I will just reconnect this component, um, the item conduits, into this one. So that, you know, things don't get too messy. And this will be insert. Beautiful. Let's jump into bat mode to make things a little bit easier on ourselves. There we are. Nice. And then what we can have is just you you and you, you know, trying to pretty the place up a little bit. How's that look? Cool. All right. So the next component of this build is going to be when to allow these things to function. And for that, we've got an energy acceptor that we're going to actually go right back into bat mode and we're going to want more ME cables. So let's snag some. Now, remember those, um, things do not require channels, so we don't actually have to hook them up to our network in any way. Uh, we just need more cables, so we'll get 10 auto do. Oh, we're missing pure flux crystals. Curses. That is not an ideal situation. How are we for smart cable? All right. Well, the whole goal of this is to automate the creation of these things, so that's what we're gonna do right now. So what we're probably going to want is maybe I'm going to put that back there so he doesn't get too much in my way. For now, let's have these guys all looping around. And we can plug in our power acceptor right here. And there should be a power line nearby somewhere. Yes, there it is. Cool. So we can just get some conduit stuff. Enhanced energy conduits, like so. Right into our power acceptor, our energy acceptor, right here. Good. And we'll give this a little bit of light just to make things look nice. Beautiful. That's what I want to see. Now, the next stage of this build is where things start to get a little bit more complicated. So I'd still like the on-off switch that I had before because we don't want these energy acceptors running all the time. And as you can see, if I can get... Uh, whale to check it out. Well, you can just see by the fact that they're glowing. They are on right. So we don't want to let that happen 
there we go, that works, right? So they're running, currently functional. We wanna have an on-off switch. And what I'd like to do is actually switch it off from here, because as soon as we cut that power off, boom, no longer running, right? They burn through their power awfully quickly. So let's flip this back on here. And what I've got are some insulated redstone conduits. I'm going to set this guy's energy mode, okay? In energy mode, we're gonna say insert with signal. Okay, so now the only time it's going to be inserting is when uh, this insulated redstone conduit is receiving some kind of redstone signal. For example, if I flip the lever, boom, it turns on and you can see it's running. I turn the lever off and it's no longer running, right? Pretty quick, nice. I don't think I need that guy there anymore. So that's what we want to connect in with. Now we want to automate it, right? So the next stage of this is to figure out when the appropriate items are sitting in the pool in order to be processed. And for that, we're going to use our old friend, Steve's Factory Manager. Check out this build. So I've tested this in my single player world. It should work pretty well. Uh, all we need is a piston and a redstone block. We're going to want a couple cables. Eight might be enough. We're going to want a redstone emitter. So let's go back to manager here. One of you. And we're also going to want an item valve, which is two hoppers, an inventory cable, and a dropper. So let's get one of you. We're going to want another, where'd item valve go? Hopper. and that should be good. Might need a little bit more of this. Why don't we just get two more so that we can craft, so that we don't have to come back for this thing. There we go. Probably won't need it, but just in case. So the item valve, where's that gonna go? Well, allow me to show you. Right here. Now the item valve is a cool block. It can uh, allow items sitting on top of it to get sucked into them. But what's making it awesome and perfect for this build is it can also detect which items are sitting on top of it. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're gonna run some um, factory cabling over to here. And we're also going to want to place our redstone emitter. This guy's job is, as you might guess, to emit redstone. That's the west direction, so let's tell this guy at the west direction, your in out is always on. Cool. And uh, the final piece of this puzzle will be the machine inventory manager, which we'll place right here so we can access it you know, when we want to, right under this piece. That looks perfect, cool. So we should be able to cover up most of this for the time being. My magnet's still off, good. I don't want any kind of trouble from that. Uh, for now, let's see. Yeah, I might do something, but let's get this place lit up a little bit more. Any darkness for monsters? No, okay. Let's get ready to write what we wanna write. So what we wanna do, and I'm gonna get a couple of these seeds just to demonstrate. So let's get some Certus quartz seeds. I'm just going to get two of them. What I'm going to do is the following. We're going to create two programs, and these are very simple, so I'm going to do them on screen. Okay. First is going to be a conditional statement. What we're going to do is check the contents of the inventory for the item valve. Now, what's cool about this is that the item valve's contents of the inventory is basically whatever's sitting above it. So if you want to check the contents of the item valve's inventory, it's whatever block is facing like the circle, which is a little bit hard to see here. So let's, so you can see how there's like that squarish thing there. That's the uh, side that the item valve is facing. So we're gonna check the inventory of the item valve and we're going to say up. I don't think it's important to say up, but we're gonna say it. And we're gonna say if any of the following things exist and we're gonna look for uh, seeds. They should be in here somewhere. Certus quartz seed nether quartz seed or fluic seed. Now an important thing to do is change this to NBT independent detection because as soon as it goes from zero to 1%, if you're saying precise, that's a different item. It's stored in NBT data, so by saying NBT independent, it doesn't matter what percentage it's at, okay? So that's an important thing to do. So we'll go back and do the same NBT independent for everything, all right? Fluics, um, we'll just cancel that right click and NBT independent, okay? 
So NBT independent, very important for those three items. Cool. Uh, so if any of those three items exist on top of the block, we're going to want to toggle the redstone emitter state. You ready? So we're going to have two of these as a matter of fact. So remember, this is a true false condition. If the item exists, then we're going to want to tell the emitter, this one, the only one that's on the cable network, to output, doesn't matter, strong or weak, should be fine, a fixed redstone strength of 15. Do not emit a pulse. So we don't have to worry about pulse, right? Pulse we're not going to do. All right. In the event that it's false, that the item is not sitting there, then we're going to take the emitter on all sides, strong or weak, doesn't matter. We're going to set the output strength to zero, basically turning off the redstone signal. And that's all there is to it. When we connect this input, what we should see, if we come over here, okay, when there is no seed there, there's no signal, and these things are not turned on, okay? And it doesn't matter if there's something else there. You know what, let me relog. So it doesn't matter if there's something else there. So for example, if there's a bucket sitting on top of it for whatever reason, it's not emitting a redstone signal. Nothing's happening. However, if there's a Certus Quartz seed sitting on top of it, note that it will suddenly start emitting a redstone signal activating the crystal growth accelerators, which are now online. How cool is that? As soon as those crystal seeds are removed, it will turn off the redstone signal, deactivating the crystal growth accelerators. So we can detect when there are seeds on top or not. And because we did MBT independent, it's totally not going to worry about the fact that it's already grown a little bit. We're already up to 6%. If we didn't do MBT independent, it would immediately shut off as soon as it went above 0% because it would be a different item. So that's an important thing to do. Now what's even cooler about this is we can immediately uh, plug into this guy for the purposes of um, picking up this item when it's done processing. So check this out. What I'm going to do is plop down for now. We'll do it as a chest. Okay. And we're going to tell this guy disabled for the time being. I don't actually want him hooked up yet, but we will in a minute have him plugged into our interface over there. What we're going to tell this thing is the same thing. We're going to have another separate trigger. So on a separate timer, on a separate setting, we're only going to have an input and an output. Remember, I told you the contents of the inventory are equivalent to what's sitting on top of the item valve, right? So we want to pull off whatever's on top of the item valve, and we're going to do a whitelist, and we're going to say these are the following items you're allowed to pick up. Pure Certus Quartz Crystal, Pure Fluix Crystal, Pure Nether Quartz Crystal, or Regular Fluix Crystal. Okay, because we're going to use this also for crafting Fluix Crystals. We're going to drop them in there as well. Your job is to pull them out of the uh, item valve and output them to the chest. Doesn't matter which side we insert it into, and an empty blacklist is fine. Cool? So you'll notice the chest is currently empty. And if we come over here and check on our crystals, they are sitting at 70%. So let's give them a few seconds to continue all the way up to 100%. And what this should do is every second it's checking to see if that's a completed pure Fluix crystal. If we check again, uh, we are at 75%. So that shouldn't take too long to get up to 100 Okay. Every second we're checking. And when we find a pure Fluix crystal there, we're going to pull it out of the uh, item valve, which is basically the block underneath the water, and place it inside the chest. Got it? And that will automatically, because there's no longer a seed there, turn off the redstone signal, thereby turning off the crystal growth accelerators. 100% totally automated. How cool is that? All right, let's do just another check. We're at 92%. So any second now, this thing should flip to the 100% mark. So you'll notice it's offline because I picked them up. It's back online. Once this thing dings up to 100%, we should see those seeds disappear. And when we check in the wooden chest, up, oh, they disappeared. The crystal growth accelerator is turned off. Look what's in the chest. Pure Certus Quartz crystal. Awesome. So now all we got to do is uh, create some patterns for the auto crafter and we should be complete. So we'll leave this stuff all covered up here. That looks nice and fancy. Everybody likes it, I hope. Yeah, look at that guy. Sweet. Um, so we can really just cover everything up here. We don't have to do any more. I told you the Steve's factory manager stuff would be easy. So now all we really have to do is go ahead and uh, reconnect this guy, tell him that he is an extract always active, okay? And that will pull the items out of the chest, place it in the ME interface, which will wind up, as you guess, we'll put seven inventory cables in there. Uh, if we go check, we will see that seven inventory cables should be in the AE system. Perfect. 
cool and cool. So fully 100%, no questions asked, automated way of doing it. So let's do the following. We're going to teach um, the system how to make this. So we're going to do Certus Quartz Seed. So we're going to do dust plus sand equals a Certus Quartz Seed. We're going to do that. And this guy, because it's a regular old crafting recipe, goes into the ME interface for the molecular assembler. Okay. Then we're going to say Certus Quartz Seed. We're going to craft one, and it should craft no problem. And we're just going to say one of these equals. So um, let's do this. Actually, it goes up here. We're going to say processing pattern, one Certus Quartz seed equals one pure Certus Quartz. Encode that pattern and insert it into the interface on the tile open crate zero. So I guess that's how it's displayed. Uh, so that's the open crate interface, okay? So now, if I were to come over here and I request, for example, 10 pure Certus Quartz, next start, boom, we pop downstairs, and what we should see is a bunch of Certus Quartz seeds getting dropped in there. And you'll see that the crystal growth accelerators have automatically turned on. Let's set this guy to never active for a minute, and if we come back in about a minute or two, we should see a chest with 10 pure Certus Quartzes in there. While that's happening, I'm going to add a couple more recipes so that I can have uh, the other types of crystal that I want in there. So let's get some more blank patterns next, and we need more glowstone. Cool. Let's get some more blank patterns, five, and that we should have enough for, but no CPUs are available because it's currently crafting. I gotta get a coprocessor, I think. All right, guys, so the next pattern I'm encoding for now is this one, which is one charge, one redstone, one nether, gets you flux crystals times two. Uh, actually, I can put that in the interface terminal here. I keep forgetting about the interface terminal. I'm not used to it. So now, if we come downstairs, these are off, which means we should have, as predicted, 10 Certus Quartz Crystals. Look at that. How cool, right? So we're going to go in here. We're going to set this back to Extract. Always active, which means you're now empty. And our charged or our Certus Quartz Crystals should be in here, right? Pure Certus Quartz Crystals. We now have 57. Awesome. Um, and if we want Fluix Crystals, it shouldn't be much of a problem. We can just, uh, for example, request... 10 of them. Start, it'll drop five redstone, five nether quartz, and five charged Certus quartz in here. And within a few seconds, we should see uh, the, the Fluix crystals start to show up. So let's see what happens. I did put Fluix crystals on the white list, right? Pretty sure I did. Come on, Fluix crystals. Don't make a liar out of me. Crafting 10 of them. What's in there at the moment? That's weird, I didn't drop the nether quartz in. Interesting. All right, guys, I think it might be that uh, the ME interface here is just having trouble getting items into this thing as quickly as it wants to. So I'm going to make it a little bit easier. I'm just going to put the hopper there, and then we can place the ME interface right there, which means we're going to need another bit of cabling, which I think we're out of at the moment. It's all right, I'll just use... Oh, well, no, we have, we have more pure, poor pure fluids now because I've been playing around. All right, let's get that connected once again. We're going to relocate these things. Set this guy to insert mode. That should be behaving a little bit better now. There we go. That should be good. So now what this thing should do I believe, and you know what I could do if I wanted to, what I should probably do is just to be sure, let's rotate this guy so that he is facing down. That's what I should do. So that we ensure that anything he gets placed in his inventory, I don't know if those Ender I.O. conduits have an inventory, but this will ensure that anything that gets placed in here, and we'll say ignore the contents of the target inventory so it'll always try and put stuff in here even if there's already stuff. Cool? So that should behave a little bit better. Let's clean this up now. Perfect. 
So let's try that crafting again. And it should, emphasis on should, work. All right, I should put my hopper. That's what it is. We will put this and this in there. Cool. And we'll request 10. Start. There we go. That's probably what it was. Ta-da! Nice and quick, right? Perfect. Ten Flux Crystals. Exactly what I wanted to see. Well done. All right, one more crafting recipe for us, if I can. Uh, we're going to want some more blank patterns, so let's go ahead and request five of those. Start. I'm going to need more glowstone, and next episode I might make more coprocessors. But what we're going to want are Fluix seeds. So in order to get these, we need to do this. Encode that. That's a regular old crafting recipe, so that can go in a molecular assembler interface. We're also going to want to know how to make Fluix dust, because we don't know how to do that, do we? No. So we will say uh, one Fluix crystal yields one Fluix dust as a processing pattern, and that's going to go into the sag mill. Cool. And then finally, what we can do is say, if we request a Fluix seed, it should uh, go ahead and make one for me. There we go. One of these yields a pure Fluix crystal, and encode that, and put that guy into the hopper. So now what I should be able to request are pure Fluix crystals. We can uh, go ahead and say, give me 20 of those, right? So it's got nine sand available. It's going to craft the Fluix dusts uh, that it needs in the sag mill. So let's start it and go downstairs and see what's happening. So you can see already some of the seeds are going down into that thing. The sag mill is processing more um, dust, more seeds are dropping down, and everything is literally working perfectly. And just to be sure, I'm again going to set this guy to never active, um, you know, let him do his thing. We should see more Fluix crystals getting processed here. Cool. Look at that. Perfect, right? I like it. So it's making all the Fluix crystals it needs. Nice. Back in a minute. All right, guys, I'm sorry to say it, but the episodes run long, so you should be okay with the fact that it's time to wrap up the episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed checking this out. I am very pleased with the design thus far. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, we will come back next time and maybe do a little bit more AE automation. There's lots of all kinds of stuff we can do. So this is Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.